Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 9, the most confidential knowledge text number 16. Aham Kratur Aham Yagya Swadaham Aham Aushadam Mantroham Aham Evadyam Aham Agniraham Hutam Mukam Kroti Bachalam Bhagamanaya Devi Nya Kripatnam Mande Sri Guru Nyana Charanam Lord Krishna is the original personality of Godhead. Lord Krishna is the original personality of Godhead. And every living entity is as he himself declares in this Bhagavad Gita, his eternal part and parcel. But although everyone is part of Krishna and therefore belongs to the superior Paraprakriti, spiritual nature, Still, the Lord says that there are two classes of living entities. The Kshara and Akshara. So, Kshara means fallible, those who have fallen down from their original consciousness. And Akshara means those who are Nitya Siddha, eternally liberated, always in Krishna consciousness. So to take care of those who have fallen, the Lord expands as Sri Vishnu. So Sri Vishnu, uh, he enacts the lila of creation, maintenance and destruction of this material creation. And Srila Prabhupada makes clear in his purports in this Bhagavad Gita that the whole purpose of this is simply to give a chance to the fallen souls to revive their relationship with Krishna. So, Sri Vishnu is the maintainer of all living entities, uh, many of whom are sunken in the modes of passion and ignorance. Mm. But in particular, Lord Vishnu, he is the maintainer of the mode of goodness, sattva guna. Which is, sattva guna is not exactly Krishna consciousness, but it is, at least you can say, clear consciousness. Whereas the Rajaguna and Tamaguna, these modes are dark. So the, the fallen living entities say, this material existence is compared to a pool, a very deep pool. So they come plunging into this pool and naturally uh, many of them, when Psyche comes into a pool from a great height, then they go very deep in the water. Where everything is dark. No, you cannot see even yourself uh, in the deep water. No, so this is Tamoguna, ignorance. 
But it just is, this example shows, uh, if one dives into water, then it is our nature to come back to the surface. Mm -hmm. So similarly, even though the living entity uh, may sink down into ignorance, still because he is part and parcel of Krishna, his nature is to rise up. So, uh, the surface of the pool is the sattva guna. Mm -hmm. And just like you know, any pool of water, the surface is flooded with light. So as one approaches goodness, then a self-realization uh, naturally manifests. And in this self-realized state of goodness, one is uh, approaching or one is coming near the Supreme Lord. So the Lord, in order to help the living entities become established in goodness, become steady there, he has manifest a culture of goodness. Uh, the principle of which is yagya, sacrifice. And that culture, as you probably know, is called Varna Ashram Dharma. There are four Varnas, or occupational divisions. And also four Ashrams, which are stages of uh, progress in dharma, in religiosity. So, brahmachari, vanaprastha, uh, brahmachari, grihastha, vanaprastha, sannyas. And so in this culture of goodness, uh, there are four uh, auspicious ends. Uh, four things that a living entity can attain there. These are told by Krishna to Uddhava in the 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. So one is Dharma, I just mentioned. Religiosity. And Sri Krishna goes on to tell Arjuna that Dharma really means that path which brings the living entity to my devotional service. <coughs> so within Varna Ashram Dharma, as Srila Prabhupada explains in Nectar of Devotion, there is also opportunities for devotional service mixed in the duties of the Varnas and the Ashrams. And besides this Dharma, there is Gyan, there is knowledge. And Lord Krishna tells Uddhava that Jnana means to perceive the Lord's presence everywhere. In the hearts of all living beings and also even in the dead material energy. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is also in goodness vairagya, renunciation. 
And this means to control the senses, to uh, reduce attachment to the body, attachment to animalistic sense gratification. And fourthly, there is Aishwarya. Aishwarya means opulence. Now, opulence, Krishna explains this to Uddhava, it doesn't mean to have two uh, Daivu cars. <laughs> or, or the other so called uh, good things of that we see here in Sofia. <laughs> this is not opulence according to the standard of this standard of the Sattva Guna. <laughs> Uh, but Lord Krishna, he goes into great detail to explain that there are eight mystic opulences, the astasiddhis, which are the personal potencies of Vishnu himself, by which he creates, maintains, and destroys this universe. Besides that, there are ten opulences of the mode of goodness, and besides that, there are five opulences that arise from cr controlling the mind, meditation. Mm -hmm. So, those are in the mode of goodness. Uh, they're able to access, they're able to uh, to utilize these uh, opulences. And therefore, Vedic culture, it does not depend on Yantra Vidya. Yantra Vidya means the science of machinery. Uh, but like here, this room is illuminated by these electric lights. And there's a very a complex mechanical arrangement uh, just so that we can have this light. Somewhere there is some kind of power plant Either it is a burning coal and belching smoke into the sky, or it is some dangerous atomic reactor <laughs> radiating the world with dangerous rays. And this is turning some big turbines, which is producing electricity, and the electricity is being fired through long, long, many, many kilometers long, uh, thick electric cables. Which are held up by high metal towers. <coughs> and then these are going in so many directions. And then one of these cables is coming here to this building. And electricity is being brought to every room. Uh, and thus we can have this little bit of light here. So much Ugra karma at the, <laughs> at the back. <laughs> so this is this civilization of Yantra Vidya. The, the, uh, 
science of machinery. It is actually demoniac. In the Bila Svarga, the heaven of the demons, everything is run by uh, machinery and by black magic. Mm-hmm. So uh, they try by this way to duplicate the opulence of the heavenly world, which is in goodness. But the heavenly opulences are natural. Mm-hmm. That means natural in the mode of goodness. Mm-hmm. To us, people who live here in this realm of passion, ignorance, Kali Yuga, these opulences of goodness sound also quite fantastic. <laughs> Impossible. But that's simply because goodness sounds impossible to us. <laughs> when one of Srila Prabhupada's godbrothers uh, came in the 1930s to London to preach, uh, he met a British aristocrat named the Marquis of Zetland. <laughs> And so the Marquis asked this devotee, this uh, sannyasi, um, may I also uh, become a Brahmana? Because he was saying, thinking, yes, uh, the Hindus, they also have their class system. And Brahmanas are at the top. I am in the British class system at the top. Maybe I can also become a Brahmana too. And this uh, sannyasi disciple of Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur replied, Yes, you can certainly become a Brahmana. You must simply follow four regulative principles, no meat-eating, no illicit sex, no gambling, no intoxication. And the Marquis of Zetland replied, Impossible! <laughs> <laughs> so this is why the opulences of goodness seem so fantastic. Now in this uh, verse, Lord Krishna is speaking of the um, sacrificial uh, science of this sattvic culture. Uh, so these, there are special terms in this verse. Like kratu and jagya, uh, svadaham, uh, svadha, oblation, aushadam, mantra, adyam, Agni, Hutam. So these are all uh, terms which pertain to sacrifice. Mm-hmm. And the sacrifice is the, uh, you know, we can exactly say science. Just like we described, there's this Yantra Vidya, science of machinery. Some um, very specific technical arrangements. So this is similarly a technology but it's technology of the mode of goodness. Mm-hmm. 
kontekstu pisaca i kardinalca za predstavljanje tog skupinata ima mjesto nukle što znači za njegovom javnom tradiciju, zato što je način teži nazvanja te strunije, te stikove se opisa, pa sve što je nukle, te predstavlja sve što je na nukama, ta je nukle kad promijenja sam nukle. So, by the Yantra Vidya, what results do you get? Well, you can look out on the street and see what kind of people are there. Okay, people who are, uh, well, we don't want to criticize them. <laughs> but anyway, not very elevated, put it that way. <laughs> They don't know the goal of life. Because yantra, this word machine, uh, what is it? What is a machine? It's just an extension of this body. Krishna also calls the physical body yantra. And this is our problem, that we've accepted the body as our soul. So, uh, this uh, machine science is simply compounding this first mistake. Mm-hmm. It is simply magnifying bodily consciousness in all directions. Mm-hmm. But this vidya, the Vedic vidya, is bringing us to the mode of goodness uh, where we can understand. I am not the body. And that everything depends on God, not upon uh, the work of my body and extended work of machine. So the the actual point of this sattvic culture, in which everything becomes clear, as I described, like the surface of a pool of water. Is so that we can see ourselves and we can see God. And then seeing this through the eyes of knowledge, we can revive uh, the appropriate, the proper relationship between the self and God. And that is devotional service. And therefore, appearing within this, we can say, halo of goodness, sattva guna, there is the deity incarnation, Archivigraha. There is the holy name of the Lord. And there are the scriptures of Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, the Bhagavata Shastras, in other words. There is the spiritual master. Uh, there are the Vaishnavas. Now, these five are all transcendental. They're actually not products of Sattva Guna. Uh, just as Lord Vishnu, he is transcendental to the Sattva Guna. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, in the Sattva Guna, one can see, one can uh, perceive the Lord, the Deity, the Holy Name, the Shastra, the spiritual master, the Vaishnava, perceive them as they are. Mm-hmm. Yes. In clear consciousness. And uh, in Sattva Guna, because one's own activities 
are refined, then one can begin uh, devotional service. One can take advantage of these manifestations of transcendence. And this is the whole point. This is the whole reason why the Lord uh, is maintaining this Tattva Guna. Mm -hmm. But, you see, in this verse, we see Lord Krishna is having to make a point. Because even in the mode of goodness, people are forgetful. They become caught up in the technology of goodness. They become attracted to these ends, these yes, ends in goodness, as I mentioned. The Dharma, the Jnana, the Vairagya, the Aishwarya, opulence. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, uh, so these people, they're called karmis and jnanis. Fruitive workers and philosophical speculators. They also exist within the uh, Varna Ashram Dharma Sattvic social system. But they don't know what the point of it is. Uh, we explained this in yesterday's class. Uh, they understand the absolute truth in a different way than do the Mahatmas, the pure devotees. Mm-hmm. So, therefore, in this verse, Lord Krishna, he's making a point, he's reminding us. Mentioning all these technical terms and saying about each one, Aham, it is I. (laughs) Aham Kratu. I am the ritual. Aham Kratu. Aham Ritual. Aham Jagya. I am the sacrifice. Aham Swadaham. I am the oblation. Aham Aham Aushadam. I am the healing herb. Mantroham, I am the transcendental chant. Aham Evajam, I am the uh, the ghee that is offered into the fire. And Aham Agnir, I am the fire. Aham Hutam, I am the process of offering. And this is all a manifestation of the Lord's own sattvic, personal sattvic potency. And he has given this only so that we can approach him. So, unfortunately, there are those, even though they rise up to this mode of goodness, uh, they still uh, they do not want to surrender to Krishna. And they become uh, nareki buddhis. That means the intelligence becomes hellish. Arche, Vishnu, Shiladir, Gurushu, Naramatir, Vaishnavi, Jati, Budi, Asya, 
या नरकी बुझी तो दिस इज फ्रॉम दी पद्म पुराण मेंशनिंग पर्सन्स हु डिराइव दे से दी डीटी फॉर्म ऑफ द लॉर्ड इज जस्ट अ स्टोन Uh, the guru is just an ordinary human being guru is a human being the vaishnava uh, is just just a particular caste particular group vaishnava is just a particular caste group they worship vishnu so what others worship shiva just the same nothing special so they view uh, these transcendental manifestations within goodness as being just another phase of the material energy and about krishna himself they say just an ordinary man Ava Jananti Mam Mudha. So this verse again. So even though they have come to the mode of goodness, uh, still by this Naraki Budi, this hellish intelligence, they remain mudha. They remain foolish. Ava Jananti Mam Mudha. Uto to zistek do treki se nete dostinjen do prodenta do dobroto zaradi tudi Naraka astu intelijentno se ustava mudha. and that they become attracted to demoniac and atheistic views uh, during lord chaitanya's appearance there was a brahmana tax collector named gopal chakravarti he was posted uh, in a town called chandrapur or chandapur no. Chandapur. So it so happened that Sri La Haridas Thakur came to that same town for some days. And the Brahmana community in that place were very delighted by his visit. So Haridas was invited by them to address what is called Shabha. Shabha means a learned assembly. Now Haridas, as you know, he was not from a high-class Brahmin family at all. He was born as Muslim. That birth is outside of the Varnas and Ashrams entirely. But Haridas was Namacharya. He was the Acharya of the chanting of the holy name. So this learned community in Chandapur, uh, they accepted Haridas as Uh, even greater than a brahmana mm-hmm. because he has sur- even surpassed the culture of the mode of goodness and become sheltered in the personality of god himself So at this Shabha Haridas Thakur uh, explains citing many uh, quotations from Shastra the glories of the holy name and there was a discussion and Haridas explains that uh, it is wrong to think that the perfection of chanting hari krishna maha mantra is mukti is liberation he 
said that mukti is attained in the very beginning of change. It is it is uh, attained by one who just has a glimpse of the glories of the name. Mm-hmm. And then he went on to say the actual perfection of chanting is to develop love of God. So love of Krishna, it is like when the sun has come up above the horizon in the morning, the eastern horizon, you see the full globe of the sun shining, illuminating the sky. So this is Shudanam, this is the pure name, this is Krishna himself. And Mukti is just uh, even before the sun comes up, but uh, at the dawn, the sky becomes lit up with light. So one is not even seeing the sun yet, but still there is light. So he said, even before one has uh, become very advanced, very absorbed in the holy name, just by beginning to chant, there is already mukti. One is already liberated from uh, all of one's karma, all of one's sins. Now that Gopal Chakravarti was present in this assembly. So he was a young Brahmana, very handsome. Because that is also a, a symptom of uh, piety, pious birth, mode of goodness, uh, good looking. Hmm. And he was learned, but he was not a devotee. Hmm. So he didn't, had not studied, did not care to study the Bhakti Shastras. Hmm. He had just studied the dry knowledge, dry jnana, shushka jnana, dry knowledge uh, pertaining to ritualism, the rules and regulations of the mode of goodness. So when Haridas Thakur said, just by getting a glimpse of the Holy Name, one is liberated, this Gopal Chakravarti became very angry. And he stood up in this assembly and in a loud oratorical voice he said, just listen to this sentimental devotee. Mm. One cannot achieve mukti liberation uh, unless one has achieved brahmagyan, absolute knowledge. And this may take millions of lifetimes to attain. And even after one has received, has achieved Brahma Gyan, still one may not have Mukti. And he says, just by <laughs> a little chanting, Hare Krishna, you achieve Mukti. <laughs> So, Haridas Thakur, in, in very, uh, you see, nice manner, 
very gentle, polite manner, he said to the Brahmana, My dear sir, why do you doubt me? Because uh, this is the conclusive statement of the revealed scripture. And he began to quote Hari Bhakti Shurudhaya and Srimad Bhagavatam, so many uh, more verses. He already quoted so many, and now he was quoting more. So, Gopal Chakravarti, hearing the devotee quoting the uh, Bhagavata Shastra about the holy name, these three <laughs> transcendental manifestations, he became very angry. <laughs> And he threatened to cut off Haridas Thakur's nose. And Haridas, Haridas smiled and said, Well, sir, if anything I have said is wrong, I will cut off my own nose. <laughs> And there was a big uproar in the assembly. And the leaders of the Brahmin community, they were coming to Gopal Chakravarti. You foolish boy, don't talk like this. You've made a big offense. This is not good for you. And so then they went to Haridas Thakur. They were begging forgiveness. Please don't take this seriously. And Haridas smiled and said, No, he is, he's just used to this dry logic. What can he do? He doesn't know any better, so he's speaking in this way. So Haridas didn't take this seriously. But Krishna took it seriously. <laughs> because this is Naraki Buddhi, this is it's hellish intelligence. So even though this Gopal Chakravarti had such a nice birth, and he had learning, uh, he knew dharma, he knew jnana, he knew vairagya, these things he had obtained. He, all of his good karma, all of his good attainments were destroyed. Within three days, he caught leprosy. And this disease ate away at his nose. His nose fell off. <laughs> he had a very beautiful face, a nose so nicely shaped, then it dropped off. His fingers dropped off, his toes dropped off. So he became an outcast, the lepers uh, in India, any society. Uh, lepers are always like a, you know, outcast. No one wants to get close to them because you will also catch the disease. Mm. So, this uh, narration from Chaitanya Charitamrita, one falls down. 
On the other side, we also see Haridas Pakur. What did he have to do with this Brahminical culture? What did he have to do with Kratu, Jagya, Svadha, Aushadam? And therefore, the great Brahmanas of Chandapur, the leaders, uh, the wise men, they accepted him as more advanced than themselves. Except for this unfortunate Gopal Chakravarti, who was very proud of his material accomplishments. And that was his downfall. So you see, one may be raised up to the mode of goodness, but there is a great responsibility there. This Vedic culture is Vishnu's culture. It's Krishna's culture. Chaturvana Maya Shishtam that says, I have created this. See, so, uh, we cannot just play with this, use it as we like for our own whimsical purposes. Uh, if we do that, we make serious offense and we will fall down, become demons. The Vedic scriptures say that at one time there was no division between demigods and demons. They were all one happy family. They were all observing dharma very nicely. But the but in one section became envious of the other. So that group uh, gradually they became known as Asuras. In Sanskrit, Sura Virodhi, those who uh, are against the Suras, the Devas, they are Asuras. So, the demoniac nature uh, had its beginning in the mode of goodness. Mm-hmm. Because they could not, these demons, uh, they could not accept that the real advantage of this mode of goodness is that we can serve the Lord. Vishnu Bhakti Smrito Daiva, the demigods are Vishnu Bhaktas. Asura Tat Viparya and the Asuras they reject this. And that's why they made their own artificial heaven. <laughs> what is this? They were thinking, what is this heaven? What are you, are you doing here? You're making all this worship of Vishnu. We're supposed to enjoy. Come on. And the, <laughs> and the demigods are saying, no, no, we have to worship the Lord. It is by His grace that all of this is manifest. Ah, <laughs> we will show you. And then they went down to the bottom of the universe. They built their own mechanical heaven. <laughs> Black magic heaven. <laughs> I mean, we human beings 
are situated between these two famous groups, <laughs> the devas and the asuras. And in the Kali Yuga, the influence of the devas is very, very less, and the influence of the asuras is very strong. But fortunately, in this age, Kirtana Deva Krishna Shamukta Sangha Parambaje. Although uh, the opportunity to cultivate mode of goodness is a very uh, practically impossible, uh, still there is a direct way to mukta sangha liberation, and that is by chanting the holy name. Any questions? According to Bhakti Vinod Thakur, there are five grades of human beings. So at the bottom, are atheistic people with no moral principles. Above them are atheistic people with moral principles. Above them are theistic people with moral principles. Above them are the uh, uh, sadaka bhaktas, devotees who are engaged in sadhana bhakti. And above them are the topmost bhava bhaktas, devotees who are relishing the ecstasy of love of Godhead in their devotional service. So, accordingly, therefore, people who uh, profess belief in God and who follow moral principles given in scriptures are better than people who disbelieve in God. They may follow moral principles also, but the theistic persons are better. <laughs> Now, having said that, but you see, this is is not including, this is not addressing the question of cheaters. In the same book, Sri Chaitanya Shikshamrita and Bhakti Vinod Thakur speaks of them separately. And so those who pose themselves falsely to be religious and just use that position for... He gives many examples of how they exploit others. Uh, he speaks of them 
inciting sectarian violence is one example. So, the, yeah, so someone in some you know cloth <laughs> sitting in front, uh, standing in front of the assembly, and then he's preaching against some other religious group. Uh, they must be killed. They must be burned. <laughs> So Bhakti Thakur says, these people are demons. <laughs> so from this we can conclude, actually, that demons are even worse than atheists. I mean, demons are atheists, but they're <laughs> they're even worse. <laughs> you got an atheistic person, even with no moral principle. He just may just he just wants to enjoy. He does just drinking rakia and <laughs> running after women and doesn't care. God, I don't I don't believe. Just let me enjoy. <laughs> but so he's 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 a, sure, sure he's a mudha and all of that. But uh, uh, still, there are demons much much worse because their business is to stir up hatred and stir up degradation and cause all kinds of trouble in the world. Well, as I was saying this morning, uh, the Vaishnava, he wants to see the Krishna conscious expand. Mm -hmm. So now, when you look at this society, <laughs> this karmi society, it is difficult to imagine how thousands and hundreds and thousands of these kind of people are going to shave their heads and, or wear saris and, <laughs> and uh, become devoted to the deity or <laughs> and uh, you know offer all of what they do for Krishna only <laughs> Mm. Why? Because they are in Tamogun and Rajagun. And uh, we may have the festival Rathyatra and they come and look and some take prasada, some even chant a little bit and they experience the happiness of Krishna consciousness. But what is their association? It is rajasic and tamasic. 
So they leave the festival and go back to hell. <laughs> so, of course, uh, any contact, even the slightest contact, for just a few seconds with Krishna consciousness, is eternally beneficial. That's that's the fact. But uh, one of the very, very important aims, heartfelt aims of the Vaishnavas in this world is paropakar. Parokapar. Uh, paropakara. Yes, paropakara. It means to uplift others, to lift them up to a better standard. Mm. To improve life in this world. Mm. So, <coughs> this is why uh, the principles of the sattvic principles of Varna Ashram Dharma, uh, they are also to be introduced into society, to be encouraged. Mm-hmm. Uh, people have to be educated that by following this system, and then, uh, as Prabhupada said, Prabhupada said this, uh, then their material life, their material existence, becomes peaceful and uh, well regulated, well organized, and you know. Uh, less problematic. And that's what everyone is looking for. Politicians are promising this. You see, here is one Mr. Tasco, one Mr. Jasco, one Mr. <laughs> Vasco, <laughs> and each one preaching, vote for me, and you will be happy. <laughs> but they have no idea how to make people happy. <laughs> <laughs> because they themselves are miserable. They themselves are <laughs> Raja Guna and Tamo Guna. All they can do is cheat <laughs> and exploit. <laughs> uh, while they're in the office, they suck as much as they can into their own pockets <laughs> until they get kicked out. <laughs> Okay. As soon as they get in power, then from every pocket there's like a vacuum hose that comes <laughs> in all directions, <laughs> sucking as much until people, what, what are you doing? Then throw them out. <laughs> then someone else comes and <laughs> <laughs> So, but people are hoping, they're hoping that uh, society can improve by good leadership. So good leadership there means there must be real brahmanas, there must be also real chatriyas. Especially these two classes, the head and the arms. Uh-huh. And they can uh, uh, rectify all these anomalies, all these uh, problems 
due to the rec- have arisen due to ignorance. Те могат да разрешат тези аномалии тези неща, от които хората страдат и по какви причини имат надежда. So now Srila Prabhupada said that actually our movement, the International Society of the Christian Consciousness, we devotees are not uh, personally interested to take up such a role. But <coughs> we uh, should set a very good example of God consciousness and moral life. And people who are of this uh, this certain kind of Brahminical nature, that means the thinking of uh, social planning, uh, how to arrange things properly and then the Chetriya class how to actually enforce this and get people to actually do it you see and then the people with this kind of brain then they will come to the devotees for for knowledge and and for the example Hmm. So, this we see in, in the Kali Yuga's history, the uh, learned gentlemen, leading gentlemen of society, because they're intelligent, they can see uh, the standards are going down, and they look for some source of uh, moral strength to preserve society. Mm-hmm. This, get, in your orthodox tradition, this Constantine, he's a saint. So he was some Mlecha emperor, Roman emperor. And but he, so he, his background was completely Roman, worshiping different demigods. And he himself actually, it's interesting, he never really became a Christian until, I think on his deathbed, he was baptized. But his whole life, he was just a Roman emperor. But he was very concerned that this culture is collapsing because people are so unregulated, they're, uh, they're just mad after enjoyment, worshipping all these different gods and different temples and drinking and having sex, all kinds of different ways. <laughs> and I'm supposed to <laughs> do something with this <laughs> society. <laughs> And there were many, many religious groups in those days. So he was studying them. And he saw out of all of them, there is one, uh, this Christian, it was just a sect. 
Christian sect, small group, and it was also very absurd. The, the philosophers of that time they used to say, "What kind of a, what is this? Did they follow some carpenter from from uh, Jerusalem?" <laughs> I mean, we have real gods, you know. We have Jupiter and a real powerful god. And they worship some some carpenter. What is this? <laughs> and he was a criminal. He was put on the cross by the Roman authorities. They're crazy, but you know they thought this is just a joke. What did this Christian do? But Constantine saw, regardless of that, these people actually are very moral. They have principles. They're honest. You can trust them. So I should arrange things so that they have more influence in the society. So he began to give all support, state support, to the Christian religion. And that was the beginning for them. <laughs> Before they were being thrown to lions and all of this. <laughs> But Constantine opened the door to prominence. And he was not actually a believer himself. <laughs> uh -huh. I mean, I don't, most is that he was dying and probably some priest came and put some water on him real quick. Now he's a Christian. Now he's a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's a saint. <laughs> But the, from this history, you can see there are such people in society who are, uh, they're very concerned about the degradation and they're looking for some moral force to change the direction that everyone is going in. And so to such people, We should be ready to preach Varna Ashram Dharma. But more importantly, we have to show <laughs> that uh, <coughs> we ourselves have some moral fiber. Uh, and they will be interested to hear what we have to say. Okay. Let's all stop here. Shri Prabhupada Ki Всичките ми секретари, те са напълно изтощени, те са свършени, просто описвайки техните грехове. Те плачат. Стига вече, моля те. И чувайки това, Ямарат, той паднал без съзнание в колесниците.
Tady připadnu. И другите полубогове дошли, защото това е било в края на деня и Бог си каня приема своята почивка и те трябва да се връщат обратно в къща. И видя ли няма рак без съзнание. И Питър Гупти му обяснил защо. И Бог Брама и Бог Шива, всеки един в двете уши на Ямарат започнали да повтарят Хари Кришна. И Ямарат скочил. И всички полубове имали екстатичен киртан. И на сред кирта, на който правили полубоговете, Ямарат танцувал като напълно полудял човек. Ямара, че царят, управникът на религиозните принципи. И той е съдията. На греховете и благочестивите дела на всеки един. И това е една много тъжна позиция. Много, но, това е една много сериозна позиция. Дори в днешно време, в днешния свят, това е, тези хора са много сериозни. <laughs> Не към тях винаги се обръщат а, ваше височество. Но тук Ямарач танцува като напълно луд човек. И тогава че тръгупти всичките му асистенти и секретарите. И те започнали да танцуват като луди. И всички те най-накрая започнали да се търкалят по земята. Напълно владяни от екстаз. И тогава Читра Гупта взел цялото досие на Джига и Мадай целият файл и го хвърли в океана. Край, няма повече. И всеки път, когато идвам в България, си мисля, ако вие също да, повтаряте и танцувате, вие също може да накарате ямараж да припадне. Джай! 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 Ари, ари, бол! Ари, кашу! Джай!